It's almost there. We go. It says live. Turn on the torch. Light up the flame. Time to melt some glass, my friends. Okay. Turn on the torch. Light up the flame. Time to melt some glass, my friends. There you are. Here I am. And we're going to do another show day. I'm listening to myself again. Say it just like I, it came. I thought it came. Okay. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show. I've got hi Amber. That was quick. Thanks for showing up. I'm I'm sort of uh, up and in the air with what to do tonight. I actually want to do a conch show, and then after that, if somebody's got a quick request, we can go from there. Um, and with that, the Oxygen concentrator is already lit. I mean, turned on, and the flame is about to be lit. And if you have a request, my dear, we can go from there, right? Here we go. Now, the conch shell is going to be a, sort of like a nice green color. And it's some uh, encased color that I did. It's actually turqu turquoise color that I encased yesterday to do conch shells with, believe it or not. Green and black dragon. Okay, that can be arranged. We'll see about doing a green and black dragon after I finish the conch shell. And purple. Come on. Green, black, and purple? What do you want me to do? Make a dragon, then beat it up? <laughs> okay. Now, the conch shell, I've been coming and, and doing quite a variety of them. Here's one right here. Oh, actually... Let me go ahead. I thought I was on the other. Hi, Athena. I thought I was on the other uh, uh, camera angle. Let me go ahead and switch that over so that you guys can see the same angle that I'm doing. There we are. Messed up, but still my table. Now, I'm doing these, and that's basically the style of conch shell that I am doing. I have done several of them and uh, I have been enjoying it immensely in the last couple of days with how they are coming out so I thought I would share that with you guys and it was funny um, I don't have one here and now but when I put it on uh, melting memories page I will show you it has to do it had to deal with something with my dyslexia I was not looking at it right or something and it was coming out just a little bit wrong. And I couldn't figure out what the problem was. And then last night, it was like a baseball coming at me. It finally just hit me. <laughs> you know, I saw it coming closer, and then it just hit me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, this is the, the, what I'm doing now is the very top of the conch shell. Conch, conch, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's very pointy and bulbous. And we will go from there at this point. Put a, uh, a punte at the top here. And this isn't going to be very big, probably less than an inch, about the size of the one that I just showed you a second ago in the long run. Those shells are nice. Sweet job, Lou. Thank you. Bulvid. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying doing these shells, and I will probably, I have gotten, I went to the beach, and I'm really close to the beach here. Um, I mean, 10 minutes, I could be putting my feet in sand. No, actually, I take that back. 15 to 20 minutes, I could be putting my beach, feet in sand as we speak. It's that close. Now, one of the things I noticed with this is that 
All you have to do is basically do that type of loop there. Seal it in real well. And now just fill in a lot of gaps here or start about, I'd say, three quarters of the way. And now just fill in from that loop on the shell to the shell to that from that. I mean, from the shell to that loop. And you'll see what I'm talking about when it's all said and done. And that's basically a semicircle or a half a heart there that the shape that I made from the top of this. Um, figure to the bottom and as you can see it's already starting taking on the shell like structure okay Brian has the real shell yeah and guess what he knocked off the tip of the top and uh, also, uh, it uh, he started blowing through it really hard, and he finally got the idea how to make it go. And he's having a grand old time. I think he wants to use it as an alarm clock for Ethan when he doesn't want to wake up. And I thought to myself, yeah, that shell is going to last a long while at the house. By the apartment, right? Now, what I'm doing is uh, basically flaying out or, or flaring out the uh, shell part that I just uh, I, I added to the, the conch itself. And I've got to make sure that it's all nice and sealed in well from all angles and all sets and done. And then at the very last, you pull and make it sort of like that ear shape. You see that ear shape? That ear shape is basically what you're looking for in the outer part of the shell, okay? And you'll see what I'm talking about, and the rest of it should fall into place after that. And also, I noticed one more uh, detail that I haven't been putting on my shells, but I'm going to see about putting it on this one is a dent right. Oh, yeah, curve it right there. Make it wider right there. That's the way the conch sort of curves in that direction at that spot. Okay. Now, we worked on the bottom. Now let's sort of make it all work for the top. Where is Brian? Brian is in the house watching YouTube, I think. He uh, created a slingshot with uh, a Gatorade cap and a balloon that he nipped off, and he's having fun. He was having fun with that earlier and watching YouTube videos on that. Now, the next thing you're going to do, uh, and I also have some of this J um, turquoise unaltered that I haven't encased then I'm going to start using at this point okay now from the outer edge of this point right here like so I am now going to create sort of a ridge which the light a, a very small fold and pull method going on here okay but it's just basically making a little bit of a ridge and it's rolling around and curving and corkscrewing to the top of the conch shell. Okay. I made a slingshot like that once, but it broke. Yep. That sounds like life in general. Brian's will last a little while at the, ha at the apartment, I know, but that's the way life is. Okay. Now I'm going to create sort of like uh, indented, or, or not indented, but sort of like spikes going all the way up the shell. 
heating up about every eighth of an inch or so, touching in and pulling out and burning off like so. And you keep going all the way up the edge. Spike for spike, point for point. And you start to see, see how much character that's giving that? It's really, really doing the job that I was really looking forward to putting on this piece. The conch shell is finally coming into itself to where I like what it's looking like. And it took me a while. I don't know how to explain it, but sometimes you do it 16 times or 20 times, and it looks like, you know, you're getting there. But you say, uh, something's, you know, it's like making a great spaghetti sauce and then realizing that the one flavor to really enhance it all is just a little bit more salt. You know, nothing terrible. You got all the great ingredients in there, but just a little bit of salt to enhance all the flavors together. And that's the same idea that was going on here. I, I couldn't figure out what the problem was. And I will show you when I do the, um, the video on melting memories, um, what I'm talking about. The, 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 uh, I was doing this spike thing, but I was doing it in the wrong direction somehow. And it, it was, and then it had to deal with my dyslexia. I know it did. Now again, uh, you put a nice brown ball, and I've got these, what I call buttonhole punchers. And you put a nice buttonhole punch right in the middle of that. And it goes, oops. It's getting there. And you heat it up again, and then you do put it in the same spot. And now you can start sort of elongating it and reaming it out a little bit. I really do like these new buttonhole punches that I made. I'm really seeing that they're going to replace how I used to do the loop pattern or, or the loop on my icicles and all my beadwork, and it will make a better and stronger a bale than what I've been used to doing. See there? Nice looping out, nice reaming. And you can continue until you say, I think I've done enough. And then on top of that, now that it's wide enough, a nice graphite rod in there makes it nice and round and ringy. And you're good to go. Now that the bottom half, one more time. We're going to warm it out and flame it out. But what we're going to do now is stretch it just a little bit. Like I do with the turtles and everything else I do. Hi, Paula. I'm glad to see that a few people have shown up. And I'm sorry that I always do it at the last minute. And I'm thinking, I need to do this. I need to do this. And I just, and then finally I just sit down and I'm really excited about these conch shells. I really am. And they've really, um, like I say, starting to come into their own for me. And it's just, now with the, Swerve of the conch shell. You'll see that I'm well. I'm doing it now. I've got I've got to redo it just a little bit. But um, I'm going to elongate or stretch out the bottom of the conch just a little bit, like so. And I'm probably going to pull some of that off. I, matter of fact, I, I'm doing that right now. And we got, and you could probably heat that up, that lip up just a little bit and roll it and curve into the body just a little bit more too. There we go. Tweezers, never, oh, there they are, on top of everything in the front instead of on the back and the bottom underneath. And we got one conch shell. You're late. But we won't charge you extra for the, for the, uh, you'll just have to watch from the beginning. I'm also probably going to do another show in about another half hour, 45 minutes. So if you have a um, 
suggestion of something you'd like to see done. Right now, uh, on the on the table was uh, Amber, my daughter, has said do a uh, dragon. A now I got to scroll back up to find out the whole thing. Let, let's see what she wanted me to do. She wanted me to do a green and black and purple dragon. You think she can make it any more comma-maclated? Anyway, but if I have a request for something else, now this dragon isn't going to be very big. You know me. I can make tiny ones. And I'll probably even use it on... Um, um, I think I'll use it on the... Uh, the claws will be the, the the purple, and the eyes will be the purple, and the black will be the wings, and I might even put some bumps on the back of his head here. But it's actually the turbo cobalt, which is a very dark, 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 dark blue. Right, right. Uh, sorry about the wind. When I tilt towards the fan to grab a piece of glass, it's going to blown pumpkins soon halloween is around the corner i will do a pumpkin on the next show and I, and that's like i say in about another 15 to 20 minutes so i'll go ahead and do one more show you know what what i'm going to do instead of getting another show i've already got the audience what i'm going to do is i'm going to say thank you very much have a good day and i'm going to continue for the next show keep it live keep it keep it going since we got a good crowd here and uh then i'll i'll keep the original like this is right now but i'll edit down to both shows where you see the conch shell at one and the dragon in another and the pumpkin in another how's that sound just to see if i can see if, you know generate more people watching different things so my dragons, when I do my dragons, it's the same basic, it's what I call this, this shape right here, my shark fin. And I know it's sort of an elongated shark fin, but I elongated a little bit to make it more for the dragon's head and a little stretchy neck there. And then the, the head is basically an altered shape of an ice cream cone. Now, if you look at the top of the head, that's the top of the ice cream going down to the bottom of the cone like so. And there you got the dragon head, ice cream cone, right? Right. Everybody's going, what in the heck is he on and how come he's not sharing? Okay. Now, the black trim. I'm going to do dots all the way down its back and its wings and the two horn and then and then and then and then i'll use i a purple for the eyes for the uh toes and the um end of the tail sound good so to make my sweet little girl happy and what father doesn't want to make his little girl happy right right now these dots are basically heated on sealed in well and one dot for dot and you can do this or not do this it's it's just a ornamental thing for the dragon and i'll finish it off on the back end when i finish that side but right now that's all i'm going to do for the front part of this dragon okay oops I'm not sure if I made everybody can't hear me or not I just heard a beep beep noise coming from my headphones so if you can still hear me give me a uh, yes I can still hear you type thing for me please sound check 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 one two one two okay here we go now wings now this type of wing i'm going to do and it's going to go forward and again it's my fold and pull you heat it up and you're heating up the end of the what i call the pencil 
and adding to the paper. Oops, I got a little bit uh, as I was talking. It made a little bit of a connection in the wrong place. I'll show you that in a second. See, see right there, you can see where it's not quite orange in, in the wing. That's where it uh, touched a little bit above. So what we're going to do is just sort of try to nip that off real quick. There it goes. And that's one wing to the dragon. Now you can, and I, and I think I will on these two. Let me see. Again. I, I want to almost pull that other little black nip off of there if I can. Oh. Uh, I think I got it. If it's not, it's still there, but it's not as prevalent, but we'll get there. Okay. Other wing coming up. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. Just making sure, because this this uh, headphone it has a silencer on it. All I have to do is press the right button, and my elbow is right at the buttons by accident, and it went beep, and I went, oh no. <laughs> I guess if you hadn't said anything, then I I guess I'd have known that I'd screwed up, and I need to make sure people can hear me. <laughs> so that works. Now. As you can see, I'm going to, you can see this one is just a little bit different than that one. And it's just a matter of touching it a little bit in the right direction. And those are pretty much even. Now you can, from that point, add another tier to these wings if you wanted to. And that's basically where you Go out to the point of there and you heat and start folding and pulling a little bit more, like so. And making sure that you're sealing together well. And boom. See there? Now you've got the double, you know, like he's ready to really fly away. Next wing, same idea. Oops, here we go. Fold and pull. Fold and pull. And you'll sort of just get a feel for it when you... And it never happens exactly the same way every time to where they're exact wings. But you can come close to length and distance and size. And nine times out of ten, one's a little bit bigger than the other. But hey... That's the way life is in real life. One leg is a little bit longer. One arm's a little bit longer, you know. So, front legs. Forgot to put them on. Let's put them on. And these are just basically, um, I want to do the L shape pattern here. Or a simple basic L. Where it just bends up like so. Now the next one, same idea. Now I do got to put a punte on the front end of this so that I can hold the back end. And what is it? I don't know what it is. Okay. I don't know what it is, but every so once, well, not every so once in a while, when I get really concentrating on a piece in the right direction and doing a really good job and thinking everything's going fine, all of a sudden, on the end of your nose or behind your ear or somewhere where you got to actually go, Ignore, 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 and then it's saying, you can't ignore me. i got to get scratched, you know, uh, a little itch that just keeps getting stronger and stronger until you drop what you're doing and finally scratch it. But you've got hot glass in your hand, and you can't exactly just sometimes drop what you're doing and scratch. You've got to hold off until you can get to a point where you can scratch. And I guess that's where the discipline comes in. 
for glass blowers. So it's a uh, one of those psychological things you got to learn how to do. And even Brian, uh, lately, he's been noticing, why is it that I got this hot piece of glass in my hand and my nose itches? <laughs> Poor kid. Okay, there's the... This dragon is turning out really nice. I'm glad that I that Amber gave me some good suggestions. I haven't done a dragon in a couple of days. And dragons are my favorite. Out of all that I do in my work, need an assistant. <laughs> I understand that one. But most of the time, my shed is a one-man studio, I have to admit. And I'm looking to do bigger and better things one of these days, but it has not have had to have happened yet. But could have had to, should, will have happened sooner or later. Right, right. And if you understood that, more power to us all. <laughs> more of my uh, future past fo forward tenses that I've come up with. And again, the uh, continue with the dots all the way down the back. One at a time. Making sure that you weld them in there really good. And they add character to the piece. Okay. There we go. And now I got to add purple for the ears and no, for the eyes. I'm going to put it on the beard and the tuft of the tail and the claws. And I just so happen to have, it's an, it's a, um, I've got a lavender. It, it looks smoky, but when it's, uh, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do another punte on the back of this thing. Actually, no, I'm not going to put a punte. And you're going, what? I'm going to try using a tool and see how well it works for me. There we go. Grippers. Like so. So hold on to do the front end and then I'll turn around and do the back end the same way. Right? Right. Here we go. Two eyes. Make sure you warm it in. I know I wasn't doing that. It's doing its job. It's holding on to it. And that way I don't have to deal with punties falling off on me, right? Now I've done that more than my fair share in these videos, haven't I? So if you've got a tool that you can use to hold it in place, go for it. Okay, there's the, the beard, there's the eyes, and doing the eyes, it's a very, you got to make sure that you put them side to, across from each other, that they're not, one's up, one's down, one's forward, one's back, so that you're doing, you know, so that they're, the symmetry of it all, you know what I'm talking about. It has its moments, and it can be frustrating if you do it wrong. And it does take talent, uh, time, patience, and practice. But sooner or later, the eyes just sort of start coming out in the right place and doing their job. Practice, practice. And oh, by the way, a little bit of practice. I was talking to a friend of mine, Bob Harley Dog, last night. And, and saying, you know, that's one of the things you guys have available to you that I did not when I first started doing glass, which is you can just kick on the Internet and watch half a dozen videos on YouTube at a drop of a hat. But back in the early 80s, they didn't have no such thing as Internet. They probably did. 
but it wasn't anything like we have today. Okay, now that's the front end, the, the, the uh, eyes, the beard, and the claws. And now I'm going to take it off that end and see if we can attach it to the other end and do the tail. Yep. The top of the tail. Okay. Quick request or quick question. Should I do a pointed or forked tail? And I'll wait for the answer before I start getting into this guy. I'll start warming it in a little bit. Pointed or forked? I'll give you, I'll give it three or four people to give a chance, I guess, and the um, majority will have it. Or if only one person says pointed or forked, oh well. Na, 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 na. Still waiting. I guess you guys got to catch up with me. Either that or, you know what? Maybe I got to make sure that it. It is going down to the bottom. Pointed, pointed. Okay. Amber says pointed. So pointed. And Paul and Paula says pointed. So we'll get there. We'll do a pointed tail. And it's basically an arrow tail. Pointed arrow. Pointed off on one side. And the fork tail is the same way, but it's just inverted. Okay. There we go, and yes, the pointed habit had had did have the uh, upper hand here. I got to get just a little bit more on this side of the pointed, and now just there we go. Nice, nice point. There we go. Making sure that it's all welded in well. You don't want to be dropping off or breaking off soon. Okay. Warm that out a little bit. Thank you for the input on, on whether you liked it pointed or, or... And I think we're going to call that one quits. And... Now, for the pumpkin, and I'm trying to put my hand over the, um, over the actual um, thing so that it doesn't create as much loud or, or wind blowing across the, uh, now this is going to be fun. I have an idea. I'm going to encase a little bit of a tubing, a small, this one's going to be a small pumpkin, but it will do the job. Right, right, right. And I'm, you can't see this, but talk about a hose that can get tangled into 16 different things. Heaven help us all. You give me a a cord and stretch it across the ro uh, 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 a yard and I could get it tangled on one peg 16 times. But if you put 16 pegs in the yard and tell me to get it tangled on those pegs, I couldn't do it to save my life. Go figure. Okay. Seal that up a little bit. Now this is a nice orange, almost a reddish lavender under black, under the, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but under the uh, di didymium filter, it almost looks red, but it's an orange. Um, so we're going to go with this to do the job here. I don't know if you can see that through the didymium or not, but it, it does have a nice red color. Um, here we go. We're just going to layer this and, ca and then, uh, then we're going to blow it out into a bubble for a pumpkin. It's going to have a nice swirl pattern going on, but I'm also going to try to do the line bumps afterwards too. It's going to be interesting. 
It's not going to be the best looking pumpkin in the world, but it's going to be a pumpkin. Because it's my pumpkin. Yeah, you're right. It is getting Halloween-ish. I should probably do a bat, too. I'll do that in another show. Not this one. Get a little batty on the show, right? <laughs> Okay, what I'm doing is I'm going about, I'd say, a little over half an inch, almost three quarters, almost an inch down the, the end of the, um, down the tube, but not that big. Like I say, it's not going to be a very big pumpkin. Okay. Now, this should be interesting. I'm going to put the blow hose in my mouth. Put a punte on the end. On the right side, put in punte when you want one. Or bent to the side when you don't want it. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna bring a flame up. This is I'm only using the single flame today and I'm only using the ten liter per minute oxygen concentrator. But this should do the job quite nicely. Now, it's just a matter of heating this evenly and blowing it evenly, but I'm not trying to overblow and I'm not trying to underblow. I'm just sort of starting to get the pressure more than what it was before. And you'll learn how to do that. It, it's just time and patience. You're not trying to blow a bubble gum bubble. You're just trying to low, quick, slowly pressurize the bubble inside. If you do not have a swivel hose, it would be a good thing to get and put into your repertoire of tools. You know me, I love simple tools. But sometimes... you got to... This is a good simple tool to have. I'm sort of narrowing down here at the top of this thing. And I'm going to call that the top. Because I can. Now I'm going to blow it out a little bit more. Okay, now... I'm going to um, put a dimple on the bottom here. I call this the bottom, but right now it's a side, right? But when I talk about a direction like top and bottom, Brian just showed up, guys. When I'm talking about top and bottom. I'm talking about orientation, top and bottom of the figurine that I'm working on. I'm doing a um, pumpkin. It looks like a black bulbous thing now. 
What? What? Oh, I think I cut it. Brian has got his little corner of the world in, in my little shop and having a good time. I haven't heard from anybody in a while. Everybody still with me? No no comments in the audience? They're just too busy being mesmerized? Is that it? Okay, here we go. I'm going to put some ridges on the, on this this guy. So it won't roll off. <laughs> the dimple is so that it will not roll off. It, the, the, it gives it a little bit more support. And um, they just talked about it on Torch Talk last night. It gives it a little bit more um, uh, stability to stand up. Now all I'm doing is basically aligning going down the rod a little bit more getting there I still have to work on the top here Looks like an apple with ridges, huh? <laughs> gotta do one more. I gotta pull out a little bit more cane for the um, stringer for, for one more. Uh, the gap looks okay, but I'm gonna put one more little stringer in there. Oh no, that means uh, he's now not alive anymore. Is that it? There we go. Now I'm going to blow this just a little bit wider. Driving. Oh, you're driving, Athena? You got to get there sooner or later, I know. Just be careful. Now what I'm doing is heating that up again one more time all the way around. And I'm blowing it out just a little bit more to make those ridges be a little bit more prominent. Not a little bit more prominent, but smooth themselves in a little bit more. There we go. And you know, this is made off the cusp. I don't really do, you know, there's a lot of times that, yes, I've done it a hundred times and I can do it, but pumpkins are not one of my, I guess you could say my forte with what I can do. But I know that I can get the shape down enough that uh, gives you a direction to go in. Now on the top of this thing, I just created a hole. And I'm going to bring the pattern in that I've sort of made dimples in all the way around these little... Not dimples, but create another little dimple on the top, just a little. I try to keep that hole in there at the same time. Now, Brian, in that drawer below you, there's, no, keep going, one of those with the glass in it. 
you'll find one that has a, like a brown or, or a dark black color, but it's brown. Sort of lift one of them up to the light and see if it's root beer in color. No, no, that's red exotic, I believe. Yeah, that's red exotic. Uh, another black or black in color, but you put it up to the light and it looks root beer. Or if that looks blue, then that's not it. No, that's blue. Look at, uh, go down the next next set of drawers and see if there's one more set here. Look at one of those and lift it up to the light if it's brown. No, if it's, uh, try another one. Not in that same set, but around that area. That brown? That's blue. One more. The next set right over. Isn't there some right there? That's all of it? I'm pretty sure I had some root beer left somewhere. Look in one of those again. I guess I'm going to have to use... Uh, I'm going to have to just use a turbo cobalt for the, for the stem. That's the red exotic again, but we'll use it. See, this is what it looks like. That's what the red exotic looks like once it's all said and done. We're going to just use red exotic, and then we'll put a green leaf on the, uh, the end of it here. Here's the stem. I know it's not the best pumpkin in the world. Green stem. All right. Jade, well, I was going to do leaves, green leaves. You know, nice black stem and then green leaves. At least one leaf. Nice long stem, right? And then we'll do the leaf. Just a second, sir. Here you go. You're welcome. He's been out here doing, he's, uh, yesterday he was making some buttons. And then he made some pendant pieces for his friend. And he made one for me, too, with my initials on it. It's really cool. Uh-oh. That means Amber's got one coming. There we go. I'm not even doing those. I, I'm my mind for some dumb reason isn't on a, a pumpkin leaf. We'll just do a basic leaf looking thing, and it's gonna look like an orange apple, right? Right. <laughs> a rigid orange apple. Amber wants a pendant, but you know you're making one for her anyway, so. Okay, now we're going to grab this with the grippers. I'm doing just a little bit more detail here, folks. Those uh, bumps on the top of this got a little bit on the prominent side, and I'm just sort of pinching them down or pushing them down a little bit. And we're going to be done with this guy. Any other requests before I call it quits for the night or on this show? And I, I still think I'm going to come back after a while just to do something. Tap it off. Oops. 
fire polish. There was a nice little bit of a green divot there. Press it in. And when that cools, that's going to look interesting. Oh, come on. Don't roll on me now. Come on. There we go. Something was underneath it. It's like a grape leaf. I know. The five-pointed style. Okay, uh, guys. Yeah, that's hot. I'm trying to get it so that they can see it. What are the letters here? A L, A L. But what's the thing on the? Uh, so like a something at the very beginning. He's trying, and he's got the loop going pretty good too, and it's sealed on there. So that's that's a a start. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it gives him something to go by. Got it. Good. Yes, Athena, thank you. I appreciate the uh, challenges. And again, I will have pictures of all of this stuff up on um, face uh, on Facebook and on the um, on the uh, Melting Memories channel. And there is the conch shell, looking really, really nice, as you can see. And then uh, also, I did the dragon. Amber wanted uh, Amber wanted a green dragon with black and purple and i said okay and then of course it's got to cool down just a little bit more before it's gonna it looks red as an apple right now but when it cools, when it cools it'll have that nice it'll have this color to it brian what are you doing it'll have this nice orange color to it okay it's just a way of uh, the, of the the glass as, Actually, as it gets warm Good. Well, again, thank you for the show. I appreciate you guys being there, as always. Uh, and if he doesn't stop telling people what my I, I'm going to say, it's going to drive me crazy. But yeah, the, I, thanks for being there, guys. And as I always say, wait a minute, let me get to the point where I can, yeah, enjoy your day. Our baby.